adaptations. As you'll remember, an adaptation is anything that helps an animal, a plant, or other living thing to survive and reproduce. So let's take a look at several adaptations that plants have. This is a rough sketch of a plant here. You can see my little sun. Um, you probably know about all, a lot of parts of plants already. Plants have flowers. Flowers help some plants reproduce. Um, plants have leaves. As you'll uh, remember, leaves perform photosynthesis for plants. And then there are stems that help transport materials from the roots um, to the top of the plant and from the top of the plant to the rest of the plant. And then um, our roots are used for absorbing water and some minerals from the soil. Let's look at some transport adaptations. Uh, this is a piece of, scalery, uh, of celery. If you've ever eaten celery, you've noticed sometimes you get the little stringy um, uh, material stuck in your teeth. Now, that stringy material is present in most plants. Um, lots of plants have long tubes that travel up and down the plant through the stem um, that are used to transport things. These transport tubes are called vascular tissue. Now there's two types of transport tubes, there's xylem and phloem, and the two dif different types are different based on what they carry or what they transport. Xylem moves water, and then phloem moves sugar or food. Um, and if you look at celery, the little holes are where those tubes start in the celery. Um, plants that do not, or plants that do have vascular tissue are called vascular plants. So the name makes sense. If they have vascular tissue, they're called vascular plants. And plants that do not have vascular tissue are called non-vascular plants. Now, um, in class, um, the only non-vascular plant that you need to know about are moss. And vascular plants are pretty much any other plant that you can think of. So moss are, are non-vascular plants. Now for gas exchange adaptations. Here's a leaf, and if you've ever looked at a leaf under a microscope or looked at it very carefully, you'll notice that a leaf has a lot of holes um, on its surface. So there's our holes. They can be on the top or the bottom of the leaf. Now if you zoom in on these holes using a microscope or a magnifying glass, you can see that the holes don't just look like a hole. Um, they're made up, of, made up of more than just an empty space. So the holes look like this when they're open and this when they're closed. The actual hole or... Um, uh, a space where things can move through is called the stoma. Okay, the stoma are holes in a leaf that let gases in and out. So gas, pass is, gas passes in and out of that hole. Now you might hear the word stomata as well. Um, stoma is singular and stomata is plural. So uh, stomata is more than one stoma. Now sometimes you don't want gas to pass in and out of a leaf. And so the leaf is going to want to close off the stoma. So we have these cells on the outside of the stoma called guard cells. So these are two guard cells. And these guard cells here are allowing the stoma to be open and then they can change shape and close the stoma. So this would be a closed stoma. So the guard cells control whether the stoma is open or closed. Now just as a refresher, um, our stoma are used for moving gases in and out of a cell. So the gas that the plants want to take in for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide and the gas that plants want to release is oxygen, which is a byproduct of photosynthesis. Now for reproductive adaptations of plants. Now we have two major reproductive adaptations. We have flowers and cones. Um, our flowering plants are called angiosperms. So angiosperms are plants that reproduce by using flowers. Now, a way that we remember that angiosperms are flowering plants is Angie kind of sounds like a girl's name. So we say Angie likes flowers to help us remember that angiosperms are flowering plants. Now, if we take a closer look at a flower, it's made up of more than just uh, one part. Um, the colorful parts that you usually think of when you think of a flower are the petals. Okay, the petals are used for attracting pollinators. Um, then we have the male part of the plant that makes pollen. That's called the stamen, and we have our pollen up at the top. Um, then we have an ovary towards the bottom. Think of this like the female part of a plant, and the ovary contains lots of little eggs or ovules. So the flower needs that pollen to pollinate those eggs. Think of the pollen like the sperm of the plant. Now, other plants don't have flowers. Instead, they have cones. We call cone, uh, plants with cones gymnosperms. So gymnosperms are plants that use cones to reproduce. Now a way to remember this is Jim likes 
ice cream cones. So Angie likes flowers, angiosperms are flowering plants, and gymnosperms, um, Jim likes ice cream cones. Um, your cones can come in different forms. Um, usually we'll have a cone that makes pollen, and we think of that as our male cone. And then we have a female cone that makes the female reproductive cells. So the cones that you usually think of um, that you find out in your yard are probably the um, female cones. They're a little bit larger. Male cones are coated with yellow pollen in the spring and the fall. Um, and then, um, I don't know if you've ever been walking outside before and stepped on something that like hurt your feet if you're walking barefoot, um, but these are cones as well. So lots of times when I was young I would step on these and they would hurt really bad. Now for some more reproductive adaptations. So a fruit is what's formed when the eggs and the ovary of a flower are fertilized and the ovary turns into a fruit. So the ovary actually becomes the fruit of a plant. Now the fruit's purpose is to protect seeds. Another function is that the fruit aids in dispersal of the seeds, meaning it helps the seeds to spread out because if an animal eats that seed, eats that, food, um, that fruit, then digests it, um, when it uses the bathroom, it'll release those seeds as it's walking around in its habitat. Now let's look at one special seed. If you've ever noticed seeds that kind of twirl down like um, a helicopter, those seeds are spread around by the wind. And then another reproductive adaptation are colorful flowers. Now flowers that are pollinated by insects tend to be very colorful because that color helps to attract pollinators like bees and birds and in, um, other insects. Um, and so this flower is very colorful. But if a flower is pollinated by the wind, it tends not to be as colorful because no one needs to attract the wind. The wind's going to blow regardless if the uh, flower is beautiful or dull looking.